What's going on guys? Joe at Odyssey Off-Road here. So, I have had the Jeep Gladiator for almost two months now. And I know a lot of you guys that watch have been with the channel for a while have seen uh, how many trucks I've gone through. <laughs> and uh, when I got rid of the 24 Tundra for this Gladiator, a lot of you were like in the comments, why what's the reason and I didn't really get into it um, on the reveal of the Gladiator video because I just kind of wanted to make the video more about the Jeep Gladiator and you know introducing that and doing a walk around of that um, of this vehicle but it's been it's been almost two months you know the newness of having the Jeep has worn off um, and this is usually about the time I get itching to look for something different <laughs> So, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to do this video uh, in, in this time frame here and um, talk about a couple things. For one, why I got rid of the 24 Tundra after only owning it a couple months um, and replacing, it, it was a replacement for my 23 Tundra, uh, which was wrecked in an accident. And um, why I replaced that 23 Tundra with another Tundra and then just got rid of it. You know, a lot of, a lot of you guys were wondering and asking me that. And, you know, uh, to be fully transparent with my viewers, I figured let me make this video and uh, explain that to you. So the reasoning behind that, uh, I'll get into here. And then what we'll do is I'll talk about how I feel about the Jeep um, after having it now for two months. And if I have an itch to get rid of it. Um, and if I feel like I maybe made a mistake buying it. So... As far as the Tundra goes, I've been a long time, you know, self-proclaimed Toyota fan. I, I love Toyota trucks. Um, I have the reasoning behind that is because I guess my first truck I ever had when I was a young man, uh, I was about 23 years old, maybe 22 years old. Uh, I bought a 1999 Tacoma and it was only like a year old. And that was like the newest vehicle I ever bought at the, you know. I never bought a brand new vehicle at that point, uh, at a young age, that young of an age. And that was like the newest vehicle I ever bought. And it was my first truck I bought, first pickup truck. Um, and I just absolutely loved that truck. I had that truck longer than any other vehicle I've ever owned. Um, I had it for probably a little over three years. And um, I mean, some of you guys are like, that's not a long time, Joe. <laughs> but for me it is, you know, you guys who watch the channel, you know how many vehicles I've gone through. That truck I had for a while. And I, and I just fell in love with Toyotas at that point. Um, you know, I, mean, I, had it I had it lifted and big tires on it and crazy suspension. And um, it, was a, it was a real looker. It was a nice, nice looking truck. And I got rid of it, got into some full, stri full size trucks. And, and then ever since then, I've always only had trucks. I've never had another car. Prior to that, I always had sports cars, muscle cars. Um, and ever since, ever since that time, I, I've had a truck. And, I've always, most of the time I've had ATVs or something or owned a home and it's always good to have a truck when you own a home, you know, picking up some stuff from the from Home Depot or, you know, purchasing a Christmas tree at Christmas time, whatever, you know, you have to strap them to the roof, you get a bed of the truck, get rid of stuff, you know, all the uses you why somebody would own a truck. Um, so I've always had a truck and a lot of times I had Toyotas. I had... Uh, I went through a little bit of a period where I had a couple SUVs, had a couple FJ Cruisers, and I had a uh, Jeep uh, JK uh, Unlimited, uh, JKU, four-door JK. And, um, but all the rest of the vehicles I had in between were Tacomas, Tundras, uh, I had a Silverado in between. Um, I had the Ram that you guys know you've seen on the channel. And so, having loved Toyota trucks, and when the new Tundras came out, man, I had my eyeball set on those things. I thought they were beautiful trucks. Um, I loved the power and the refinement that they offered over the previous generation. And I had the, the last previous generation Tundra I had was a 21 TRD Pro. So when it came out, I was, I was a bull of fire. I was all about getting one. But as you guys all know, the prices are crazy expensive. And so, I was kind of hesitant for a little bit. Um, I had a Jeep Gladiator Mojave, 
after my 2100 TRD Pro. And I had that for a short period of time, but I put about 6,500 miles on it. And if you guys watched the 6,500 mile review of that truck, that Mojave, right before I got rid of it, you know, I actually really did like it. I didn't have any complaints. I, I put it through a you know, myriad of tests and variety of conditions, you know, off-roading, towing, hauling the quads. Uh, and, and it did fit, fit the bill for almost everything I, I needed it to. And then ever since I got rid of that truck and I, you know, I got in back into the Toyota Tundras. I partially, well, I had the Ram for, for about a year. Um, and then that was kind of the bridge to the 23 Tundra I had, which the Army Green one you guys may have seen on the channel. And that one got totaled out on me. It was re really disappointing. It was heartbreaking. I, I loved the truck. And so immediately my first instinct was put a deposit on another Tundra just to replace it. You know? So once I got paid out by the insurance, I just purchased the Tundra uh, without honestly even thinking about options you know what what are better options out there I've had a lot of other trucks was was something else that maybe that I've had in the past better for me and better for my lifestyle and I didn't really think much about like do I really need a full-size truck that is um, really what led me to getting rid of it one of the reasons so I Thought to my, you know, after having it, the, the second Tundra for a while, not, not a while, but about a month, um, and the pay, first payment was looming, in my brain, I was like, and you probably heard it in my voice when I did the walk around of that Tundra when I picked it up and went over the window sticker. I kind of, looking back at that video, there was definitely some obvious pause um, and concern in my voice when I talked about the price I paid for it, um, and I didn't pay a markup or anything. I got a good, I got a good deal on it. I bought it from a very reputable Toyota dealer um, in Sierra Vista, uh, Arizona. Uh, it was a great dealership to work with if you're ever in the area. That's uh, Sierra Toyota in Sierra Vista, Arizona. Um, so I got a good deal. So I wasn't like you know hurting that way. But regardless, the truck was truck is expensive, and the truck was expensive. Um, and with the first payment kind of looming, in my heart, I just felt that I don't want to make this payment. It was a gigantic payment. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, it was, you know, it was almost, it was about a $70,000 truck. So you looked, it was looking at about $1,100 payment. And I just didn't want to make the payment uh, for s six years, whatever it was, the loan. Um, I just couldn't see myself doing it for what I was using the truck for. I'm pulling my quads. Uh, most of the time it's one quad in the bed. Uh, a few times a year I throw them all on a trailer and, and haul them. And then that's only like, with all the quads on the trailer, it, you know, maybe 4,000 pounds. So I didn't need a $70,000 truck that tows, you know, 11,500 pounds um, and has, you know, 480 pound feet of torque. For that kind of, for that kind of service, it, it was, it wasn't a good daily driver. Uh, not that the truck was inefficient, the truck was very efficient for what it was. Um, I got, got pretty good gas mileage with it, but I, for everyday driving, I, I've said it a couple times on this channel and I've said it, you know, to relatives and family and my wife and, you know, others my philosophy on buying on having a truck um i i enjoy a mid-size truck better it's to me it, it fits my needs does everything i need it to it's a little more versatile in the sense that i can do more with it i can go take it down some trails i can go off-roading with it and then you can't really do that i mean you can there are people that off-road a full-size tundra trd off-road um but there's also you know you're also very limited. The truck's gigantic. Um, just driving it every day, in and out of parking lots and all that stuff. Uh, you know, everyday driving, traffic, uh, parking it, going out to dinner with the wife. You park it, just find the parking spot. And parking spots in half these parking lots are very tight and small. And you need to worry about people dinging your doors and stuff like that. And I like to keep my vehicles clean. So I would get the sweats when <laughs> I was get the tundra dirty. I didn't want to take it out in the rain. It would, it would be raining. I'd be like, ah, I'd leave it in the garage because if it gets dirty, 
it's a gigantic vehicle to wash. You know, it's not like a midsize truck. I can, I can wash this Jeep in like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Um, zip around it real quick. Uh, between the black roof and the, and the plastic fenders and stuff, you know, it's, there's very little painted surface. Um, and it just makes it that much easier to clean and take care of and maintain. And a gigantic truck is a gigantic bill. It's, uh, you know, hard to park. It's took up a ton of room in the garage, too. Uh, if I wanted to work on just changing the oil, uh, I got to pull out my wife's truck. I got to pull out the Tundra, recenter it in the garage. You know, if it's a rainy day, you're pretty much screwed. I like, can't pull any. I don't like to pull my vehicles out if they're clean in, in the rain. Um, and then to work on stuff. So there was, there was just no room in it. It was, it was tight. So I know I'm not being very specific, but it was a combination of all of those things. The reason why I said, you know what? I just don't want to do this. Uh, I had a little bit of doubt when I went and picked up the, the Tundra, but it, it was just a beautiful truck. It was gorgeous. I, best looking Tundra by far. Um, that Lunar Rock, all color matched. It was a gorgeous truck. Loved it. Uh, there was some things I that were kind of bothering me a little bit about it. Um, the It wasn't as solid feeling. It was faster, it had more power, it had more luxuries than the outgoing Tundra. But it wasn't as solid feeling as my 21 Tundra was, uh, or my 2019 Tundra was. Um, there was a lot of little creaks and noises in the interior. Uh, a couple of them that I had to fix in just only in a month. Um, so I can only—I I just don't know. Like after a couple of years, is it going to be rattling to death inside? There's a lot of loose-fitting um, parts on the, that are that put together the interior, and I think it's a result of there's so many small pieces assembled and, and put together. Whereas like the outgoing model half the dash was one piece uh, the, the door panels were all was like two pieces you know one piece door panel and a small piece on the armrest that popped up the new one was like 50 pieces the door panel and then it was like five different pieces that made up the armrest so all those little pieces when you have all these little pieces that are assembled in the interior of a vehicle they start rattling making noises now for seventy thousand dollars i don't know about the rest of you but that a creak and a rattle bothered me when I'm paying seventy thousand dollars for the vehicle, um, now I'm not knocking the truck. The truck was a great truck, and those little things don't bother a lot of people, but they bother me, and it bothered me a lot more because of what I knew I was paying for the truck. So at the end of the day, all those things combined, that's why I got rid of the Tundra. It's gone. I don't have a single, um, single hesitation about, or or regret. I should say is a better word. I don't have a single regret about getting rid of the Tundra. It was a great truck, and I'm sure, I'm sure somebody somebody bought it already off the dealer I traded it into. Um, I didn't lose much money on the truck, a couple thousand dollars. Um, and I when I bought the Gladiator, the Gladiator had like $16,000 off sticker. So I ended up way ahead of the game financially um, in a vehicle that's way more capable off-road. Um, and I can it's, it does everything I need it to still. It's very versatile. It's easy to drive. It's fun to drive every day. So with all that being said, let's get out of the truck. Um, I'll walk around. So you don't have to keep staring at my ugly face on the camera. <laughs> I'll walk around the truck. You can look at that a little bit. And I'll kind of talk about my thoughts on the Gladiator and if the newness has worn off and if I feel like maybe I should have purchased a different truck. So let's talk about that now. So guys, the Gladiator. Gladiator Mojave. Why did I buy it? Why this truck over all other mid-sized trucks? Was it a mistake? Do I regret it? Should I have gotten a Colorado ZR2? Should I have gotten a new Tacoma? Or a leftover third-gen Tacoma? Those are all good questions. And all things I thought about myself. And things I thought about today, this morning, while I'll sip my coffee um, on my day off. And I was by myself. Wife was at work. Kids were asleep still. And I was drinking my coffee this morning thinking, did I make a mistake buying this truck? Should I have bought a Colorado ZR2? Should 
Should I have bought in a Tacoma? Should I have bought in a new Ford Ranger? And it didn't take me long to come to a conclusion that I 100% made the right choice. For the first time in owning a vehicle in the last couple of years, after a couple of months of ownership, I truly, thoroughly enjoy every minute I drive this truck. I don't regret it one bit. Uh, it, it's a, I, I love it. You can see right now it's, if you maybe you can't, but it's it's fairly dirty. Um, I had it at the dunes. Went to the dunes last week with it. Um, I haven't washed it since I got home, and it's been raining the last couple of days. So it's, I drive I've been driving it in the rain, and it's pretty dirty. It's pretty messy. It could use a nice bath, and I'll probably get one this weekend. But I. I just love the truck. I mean, look at it from that angle. It's just, it's a gorgeous truck. It's aggressive looking. It's got good ground clearance. Um, I can do, I can, I throw my quad in the bed and I take, I, you know, go to the dunes. Um, I, the only downside of the truck is I do, when I camp at the dunes, I sleep in the truck and the, and the interior is very small. You know, it's, it's a mid-sized truck, so. Uh, that's the one upside of the ownership of a full-size truck for me. But we got some workarounds for that. And that'll come to the, come to the channel in the future. But I, I love driving the truck every single day. It's fun. Um, I, I, I talked about like the creaks and the noises and the t tundra. And it bothered me because it was a $70,000 truck. <laughs> and for what, for what I was paying for it. Uh, it, that stuff, you know, to me, it should have been perfect. It should have been like, you know, you're paying 70000 for something, you should be getting $70,000 quality. And I know today's day and age, that's just not the case, you know. But um, in my mind, uh, I'm older, so I'm used to paying, I'm not used to paying this kind of money for trucks. And to me, it's just, it's just crazy that I think the quality should be better for $70,000. Now, this truck, window sticker was sixty. It was like sixteen thousand dollars off. So you know, do the math. I didn't pay. I didn't pay nearly what I paid for the Tundra. Um, I'm saving you know close to three hundred dollars a month in my payment. So, and I can do more with it. I mean, to me, it's a absolute win-win. Um, I'm about to make my second payment on the truck. Doesn't bother me one bit. Um, I have a lot of plans for the truck. We're going to do a lift kit on it, and we're going to put some 35s on it, and we're going to wheel it. We're going to go to Moab. Um, we're going to take it up. I'm going to take it up here even, some trails by my house. The same ones I take the uh, quads on, and we're going to, you know, maybe do some camping with it. Um, so I got a lot of plans. I want a lot of things I want to do with the truck. I, I just enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy it. I take it to the gym every day. Um, I, it's my daily driver and it's my toy hauler. Yeah, everything I need to do in my life, this is the truck that does it for me. And it's done everything. It drives beautiful. Uh, suspension's great. And that's the reason why I got the Mojave because at some point I'll probably, you know, these shocks will wear out and we'll replace them uh, with some something else, Falcons or whatever. But out of the box, the truck is. Sits, sits nice. It's a little higher than, than the other Gladiators. It's got nice suspension, so you don't have to literally touch it for a while. You can just drive a stock, and it's plenty capable, and it does it does a lot of stuff. It sits not, sits up high and nice in the front. Uh, it's got good ground clearance, good approach angles, so you don't have to do anything major to it to have some fun with the truck um, right out of the box, right off the right off the deal a lot, and that's the reason I chose the Mojave. Now. Could I have gotten a ZR2 or, a, and those are nice trucks, man. I tell you, I really looked at them long and hard, but I don't have any confidence in General Motors. <laughs> I got to be honest. Um, I just don't, you know, I, I, I had Silverado, which I had good luck with. I had a leaky back window. Um, I had the 5.3 with the 10 speed in it. And I didn't have the truck long enough to develop maybe the issues, but there's countless people still to this day 
with lifter failures on five threes and the six two engines, which is a shame because they're great motors otherwise. And it's a shame that GM doesn't uh, fix that issue in manufacturing and it waits till it fails on somebody and have to bring it into the dealer for warranty repair. But, you know, Ford Ranger, the new ones are nice looking trucks. But again, I, I don't have, I didn't, I don't have the confidence. Um, I had a Ford Ranger for three weeks. After I got that had the last Gladiator Mojave, I got it. I was like, I'm just gonna get a regular midsize truck. I knew the midsize truck was working for me, and I figured I'll just get a regular one. I got a Ford Ranger trimmer. It was like literally a flash in the pan on the channel. I had it for three weeks. Um, I never talked about why I got rid of it, um, but the reason is is that thing was loaded with electrical issues uh, within the first week of ownership. And I just wasn't going to fight that for the lifetime of owning it or for even a year or two. That's just a nightmare waiting to happen, getting stranded someplace. Um, and that seems to be a, the, the MO of Ford. You know, I mean, I have, I have, I have a, my work vehicle is a Ford Fusion that my company provides. And that thing is a basket case of electrical problems. I've gone, that thing eats batteries like they're like Cookie Monster eats chocolate chips. It's out of control, the, the electrical problems on that thing. Uh, it's constantly in the shop. So that thing, I, you know, as soon as that started happening with the Ranger, I said, that's it. I'm not dealing with this like I deal with my work car. So that's it. I, 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 I had no confidence in the Fords. Um, the Toyota Tacoma, the new one, beautiful truck. A couple things, a couple detractors for me on that. Um, They're built just like the new Tundras. That's not a bad thing. They got a lot of bells and whistles. You got a big 14 inch screen. You got a nice down system. You got all the off road goodies, electronics, locker, and all that stuff. However, it's a first model year vehicle. Uh, first, first model year with the four cylinder turbo. And, that, and that's not a detractor to me, other than the fact that. Well, I guess that maybe it is a detractor in a way. It's not a detractor in the sense like, you know, uh, it's not a V6. That, that, that doesn't bother me because for everyday driving, it's probably very fuel efficient. And, and it has been proven to be very fuel efficient based on the people that have them so far um, and, the, and the reviews they've done on them. And it, they tow very, you know, very well because of the power. They're not rated to tow very high, but they do tow very well of what they're capable of doing. And... Um, they got a lot of bells and whistles. They're nice looking trucks, but it's a first model year. They're going to be riddled with issues just like every first model year truck. And until those things get ironed out two, three years down the road, then maybe you'll probably have a solid platform that you can feel confident buying and, and not have to worry about little stupid things going wrong. I'm not looking to be a guinea pig um, for a manufacturer. And to be quite honest, they still didn't address the biggest issue I have with the Tacoma for being a family person is the back seat room is absolutely horrible. Uh, there is no back seat space on those trucks. You can squeeze in the back seat, to your two kids, and you know go to the mall or go shopping for the day. But if you're going on a long road trip, those kids are going to be bitching and complaining in the back seat because it's just too tight. Your knees, you, you know, knees are in the back seat, at the back of the front seat. There's no vents back there. There's no charging ports for your for for your for their devices and stuff like that. I mean, this thing is loaded with charging ports. It's got vents back there. There's loaded a loaded leg room in the back seat of the Gladiator. I mean, a ton. It's it's at, in the midsize class. This has the most uh, interior leg room uh, for backseat passengers. The Gladiator, bar none. I've sat in all of them. None of them com none of them compete. So that's a big plus when you're a family person. Um, so. This morning when I was drinking my coffee and thinking, hey, do I regret getting this thing? Simple simple answer is no. I do not. I love it. Um, it's like having, you know, it's like when you're a kid and you have a toy, a modular toy or Legos and you, and you build different things. This is like the Legos for an adult. You can do anything you want with this. You can build it one way uh, a year from now, get tired of that build and break it all down and build it up a different way. It's it's very modular I and mean, it's a gazillion companies out there. Is gazillion even a word? There's a gazillion companies out there that make parts and uh, accessories for these things. And you can build it to your taste, to your needs, uh, what you want to do with it. 
And I know some of you keyboard warriors are probably saying, but Joe, you talking about, you know, have faith and reliability of all these other vehicles, but what about Jeep? You know, Jeep reliability is not good. Well, I think a lot of people that have that mindset haven't really owned a modern Jeep, a JL or JT. The JL and the JT are pretty much the same vehicle, except for the JT has a bed. Um, the new JLs, my buddies had two. Um, I've had two Mojave JTs, Gladiators. Um, I know a lot of people, there's a, there's a guy in my neighborhood that has a has had a Jeep Gladiator since they first came out, and he still owns it. Um, it looks just as good as the day he bought it, sitting, sits in his, uh, sitting in his driveway. And there's another guy in my neighborhood with a nice lifted red Rubicon. Um, and they've owned them for a long time. They, they are not unreliable vehicles. They, do they have their specific issues that they're prone to? Of course. Um, you know, oil leak where the oil filter goes, the oil, you know, the oil uh, cooler can, can leak. Um, rear main seals uh, can be leaky on these motors. But those are all things that are easily fixed under warranty. Um, not a big deal at all. And the overall reliability of the truck is very good. And it's been proven to be very good. Um, the other thing is with this truck, if you're out of warranty, I'd rather be out of warranty on this truck here than a new Toyota Tundra. Because if something breaks on that new Toyota Tundra, I don't know if you ever looked under the hood of one of those things, but with the twin turbos and all the plumbing and the electrical and the stuff all over the place, you're not fixing that thing by yourself. It's not old school. Like these, this is still as modern as it is. It's still an old school mentality. It's very basic. You have two axles, you have a transfer case. You don't have a lot of electronic gadgetry all over the place. You have a naturally aspirated V6 under the hood, with, which by the way, this V6, if you had 150,000 miles on it and your motor blew up and you had no warranty at that point, which you're not, you can go to a junkyard and get a low mileage 3.6 liter from a wrecked vehicle. They put these, this motor in literally everything that uh, Chrysler makes. You know, they've been in Challengers, Chargers, uh, full-size rams, jeeps, uh, everything, you name it, minivans. They've, they've used this motor in a myriad of different vehicles. Um, you can get one easily. And I know that, so I have a lot of confidence that if something breaks out of warranty on this thing, I can either A, fix it myself, or B, I can have a mechanic fix it for me, and it's not going to bankrupt me. It can be fixed. Um, and that's, and that's a good feeling to have when you're paying as much money as you're paying for a vehicle nowadays. So that's it guys. That's, that's the scoop. That's why I got rid of the Tundra. Um, no, I do not regret buying the Mojave. There's plenty more Mojave content coming. We're going to off-road it. We're going to build it up. We're going to do some nice stuff to it. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on parts. Uh, as, you, as you know, we did the headlights already. There's a video out on that on the channel. You can check it out. I bought it with the halogen headlights, and I converted to the LEDs, LED fog lights too. So we're in the process of converting all the lighting to LED. And then we're going to work on, you know, maybe some 35s first, and then a 2-inch lift, or maybe a 2-inch lift first, run the 33s with that for a while. I might, that's an option also. I do love these Falcon Wild Peaks. Um, they handle great in every condition. So we may keep them even if we go up to 35s. Maybe just get them in the 35. But I haven't decided whether I want to go to a 35 and leave the suspension stock. Or if I want to do a 2-inch lift and then run the 33s on the 2-inch lift for a while. And then do the 35s. I'm not going to do them both at the same time. Uh, for one, it's very expensive um, to do it at the same time. And for two, I want to kind of feel out the difference. You know what I mean? I want to feel um, what, you know... Doing, just doing the lift, say, and running 33s how it feels, or just having 35s on a stock Jeep. Uh, what's the effects? Also, I'm not 100% sure when I go to 35s if I'm going to change the wheels, and that's going to add a little bit more cost, so that's why we're going to do that in the lift separate. We'll just kind of break it up. Um, and I like to do things that way, too, so you can kind of get a feel for what is actually what you're doing is actually and how it's affecting positively or negatively the vehicle. If you do a couple things at the same time, 
you change your tires and do the lift at the same time and you're not happy about a certain ride characteristic, well, you're not going to be able to narrow that down to whether it's the tires or the lift. And if you do them separately, you know, you, you know exactly what it is that caused either A, the positive effect that you feel or the negative effect that you feel. And, you know, could be one or the other. So that's it, guys. We'll cut this one off here. I've been rambling for a while and you guys are probably tired of, tired of hearing it. But uh, I don't want to be redundant and start repeating myself, but that is pretty much it. Smash the thumbs up button if you like the video. Um, I owed it to a few of you guys to give you that explanation on why I got rid of the Tundra. So there it is. And hopefully you guys that were here for the Toyota stuff stick around. I love this Jeep. I love the Mojave. I love the Gladiator platform. Um, if you guys are on the fence or looking at for a mid-size vehicle, seriously consider it. I will say it's not for everybody. And I'm going to do a video on why you shouldn't buy a Jeep Gladiator if you're in the market for a mid-size vehicle and why you should. So we're going to do a video on that. Um, we'll have that come out, you know, one of these, one of, maybe in the next few weeks or month or so. I'm going to drop a video about that and my recommendations on if you are shopping for a mid-size vehicle. Things to consider, we'll call it, when purchasing a Jeep Gladiator because it is a lot different than any other mid-size truck. And it's going to ride different. And it's everything's different about it. The tops come off. You have, you know, solid front axle. It's not independent front suspension. So things are going to be different. But that's it for this one. Smash the subscribe button. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, please. It really helps me out a ton if you hit the like button. Leave a comment, too. You don't have... If you want to hit the like button, that's great. Also, leave a comment, though. Let's start a discussion. You think I'm crazy? Um, do you, do, how many of you think I'm really going to keep this thing? <laughs> if you guys follow the channel, you probably half of you probably don't believe me, but the proof is in the pudding, I guess. So we'll have to just say, uh, you know, I'll have to prove you wrong. And I, I know I know that. So um, leave a comment below. If you think I'm crazy, if you think I'm going to get rid of it and I don't, uh, and you don't see me keeping this thing, be honest. That's cool. Let's start a discussion. Uh, I love I love hearing the feedback. I love answering all the comments. So this is Joe at Odyssey Off-Road. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.